Hey, I'm John Weiss. Welcome back to Table 17. We're working on our Ultimate Kingdom Wednesday night series. And the chapter we're working on is Chapter 9. And this is uh, not quite as long of a chapter, so we're going to be able to do this in two parts. And they'll each be about 12 or 14 minutes each, I would guess. And so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you, O Lord, that you're speaking into our hearts. And as we learn more about you, Lord, it's changing us day by day. Lord, thank you, Lord, that when we have ears to hear your word, it changes the future of our lives, making it amazingly better. Thank you for these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. The completed work of Jesus Christ is the essence of the ultimate kingdom. Jesus Christ has been received into the heavens to sit at the right hand of his Father. His work has been completed. The first fruit has become reality. Mysteries revealed to the holy prophets of God by revelation and divine unction through the ages have now come to pass. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which was preached unto you whom the heavens which before was preached unto you whom the heavens must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your own, of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And if and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus." sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. We find verse 23 that those who refuse to hear the message of Jesus Christ will be cut off. Although the concept may make us uncomfortable, God always has a point of cutting off those who do not repent. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Proverbs 29, verse 1. The promise that God made to Abraham and Eve in the Garden of Eden has now been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The seed of the woman has bruised the head of the serpent. We are seeing now the fulfillment of the prophecy that Christ will remain in his heavenly place until the world has been destroyed, restored until the world has been restored to his dominion. Jesus has taken the book of God's eternal plan from his Father's hand, and he has opened it. Little by little, we are beginning to see prophecy come to pass. We are seeing those things taking place so that we can begin to say by faith, the work is done. In essence, dominion is already accomplished because its substance has already been completed. I don't believe we have ever totally understood faith. What is its substance? Question mark. Is not the substance of faith the plan of God written in the word of the Lord? Question mark. Somehow we must find a place where we so learn to live by that faith that we lay hold of that substance and walk in it. We don't depend on the evidence that is around us in order to believe. Why were the scriptures written, question mark, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. John chapter 20, verse 31. 
When will the scriptures be fulfilled? Question mark. Fulfillment comes when we have become such a people who respond to God that he may say the scriptures have been fulfilled. When God is able to say that, the gospel of the kingdom has been witnessed in the earth. The kingdom alternative must offer the world clear, comprehensive comprehension and understanding that Jesus' work has indeed been accomplished. Essentially, the first chapter of Revelation tells us the very same thing that the work is being completed. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. If only we could understand the nowness of God and the immediacy of these events. These events are not way out in the future. They are even now upon us. They are at our very door. When John began to write to the seven churches of Asia, he said, Grace be unto you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. The identification signifies the eternity of God, the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Jesus Christ is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. People had to make a choice upon, once Jesus confronted them because Jesus Christ himself was a witness. The kingdom of God will become a reality when the church becomes the same witness that Jesus Christ was. As the kingdom generation, we are called to communicate and demonstrate the kingdom way of life. We are to preach and teach and demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom of God until it has become a witness to such a degree that God can say, My church has done enough. The witness is sufficient. We are kings and priests unto God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. And we are now first fruits of faith. More and more, however, we will be first fruits in reality. Events do not exist only in terms of dispensations, because they exist now also. Someday speaks of the new Jerusalem, yet 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says that we are new creatures in Christ when we are born again. It is not either or. It is both and. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also who pierced him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. The concept we have been discussing centers on God as even as ever present and at work in our lives now. He has been at work in the past and he will be at work in the future. God's concern for our lives is nothing new. We are now seeing everything that God wants us to see, but we are seeing it in a first fruit dimension. As we allow the first fruit dimension to grow in us, it will also become more and more of a witness to the reality of the kingdom which is to come. John's revelation ends by describing a state of perfection. We are perfection now in Jesus Christ, who is perfection lifted to its highest dimension and lived out in a social order. His profession exists now by faith within us. This perfection is described as a city in John's revelation. Please understand that this city is not a city made with hands, so it could not be the old Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified, because that city was built by the hand of man. How will we find the city of God, 
the New Jerusalem? Question mark. We find it by obedience. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And when he went out, not knowing whither he went, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. How are we traveling, question mark, today? How are we traveling today, question mark, by faith? How was Abraham traveling, question mark, by faith? We are sojourning in a land of promise as Abraham did, and we are sustained as he was by the promises of God. The city whose, build, the city whose builder and maker is God has absolutely nothing to do with old Jerusalem. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. John chapter 14 and verse 2. What is the place Jesus is preparing for us? Question mark. That place is the new Jerusalem with many rooms not made with hands. Jesus prepares it and we are now maturing and becoming that place. The psalmist David described the new Jerusalem by divine revelation. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Psalms chapter 46, verse 4 through 11. In his vision, David saw the new Jerusalem in which God is in the midst of her, and there is no tabernacle. Is there a tabernacle, is there a tabernacle in the old Jerusalem? Question mark. Yes, and there always will be. But John said of the new Jerusalem, Revelation chapter 20, 21, verse 22. And I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The 107th Psalm also describes the New Jerusalem, a city which God creates by maturing people whom he, he can inhabit as his tabernacles. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their souls fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Psalms chapter 107, verses 2 through 7. The city of habitation which God prepared for the desolate, hungry wanderers is His presence. The perfect city in which all things are made new. This city is a new heaven, a new earth, a new order of things. In Christ we are now new creations. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Your wife may still argue with you, and your husband still may not give you money to buy new clothes. But God has said that all things are made new. How can we recognize, reconcile 
this promised newness with the fact that the same old things still trouble us? Question mark. The embryo of newness is within us. The potential for newness lives there, but the reality is yet to happen. Hat, what is the reason the body groans as it waits for the manifestation of that newness? Already within us, we begin to claim that newness of, of life because it is the first fruit of what God is going to do in our lives. We'll stop there and start again in just a minute.